Dragons, mythical creatures that have been part of human storytelling for thousands of years. From the fiery beasts of Western legends to the wise, serpentine dragons of the East, they've captured our imagination across cultures. But the question is, were they just myths? Or could dragons have actually existed? Let's explore what it would take for dragons to fly, breathe fire, and leave such an enduring legacy in our myths. And stick around. This journey might just change how you think about dragons. Let's start with the basics. How could dragons possibly fly? Picture a massive creature, wings spread wide, soaring through the sky. To lift a dragon's enormous body, its wings would need to be massive, about 50 to 60 feet across. But even with these giant wings, the dragon's bones would have to be lightweight yet strong to support such a heavy frame. Think of bird bones, hollow and filled with air sacs to help them fly. If dragons had bones like birds, it might just make flight possible. But could their enormous size truly be supported by their anatomy? Let's look at flying animals for a clue. In nature, pterosaurs, flying reptiles, had wingspans up to 33 feet. Dragons would need an even more specialized structure, hollow bones, powerful muscles, and an efficient way to glide through the sky. So could dragons fly? It's not completely out of the realm of possibility if their bodies were uniquely adapted for it. Now, what about those legendary fire-breathing abilities? Could dragons really breathe fire? While modern science says no, there are creatures today that create flammable chemicals, like the Bombardier Beetle, which can shoot hot, toxic liquid from its body. Imagine a dragon with an organ that produces flammable gas, and another that ignites it, maybe even through a spark. Combine that with the right body structure, and we could have a fire-breathing dragon. Of course, such a system would be incredibly complex, requiring specialized organs and muscles, but it's a fun thought, isn't it? Let's shift gears and talk about the different types of dragons found around the world. We all know fire-breathing dragons, but what about ice-breathing or water-breathing ones? Could these different dragon abilities have some basis in reality? Perhaps they could have adapted to their environments. Fire breathers living near volcanoes, ice breathers in freezing climates, or storm breathers in temperate regions. It's a fascinating idea that different dragons might have evolved to survive in very specific habitats. But before we continue, please subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up if you like it, and share it so other can also enjoy it. Now let's take a step back and think about when these dragon myths first started. The earliest records of dragons appear around 3000 BCE in cultures like ancient Mesopotamia, Egypt, and China. But here's the kicker. How did people from such different regions, with no means of communication between them, come to believe in and describe similar creatures? What if dragons weren't just myths? What if people from different parts of the world really saw similar creatures or remains? Could dragons have existed in some form, inspiring these shared stories? It's possible that people came across large reptilian fossils, maybe from crocodiles or huge lizards, and mistook them for dragon remains. But what's even more intriguing is the idea that despite living in completely separate cultures with no way of communicating, people came up with strikingly similar ideas of these serpent-like creatures. This could point to the possibility that dragons were real creatures, seen by different civilizations around the same time, leading to myths that share common threads. Now, one of the biggest mysteries surrounding dragons is the lack of physical remains. Unlike dinosaurs, whose fossilized bones we can find in abundance, there are no dragon skeletons. But if dragons had hollow bones like birds, those bones would have been much more fragile and less likely to fossilize over time. Birds' lightweight bones are designed for flight, not for lasting through the ages. Perhaps this is why we don't find dragon remains today. They might have once flown across the skies, but their delicate bones didn't stand the test of time. And finally, let's talk about the different types of dragons that appear in myths around the world. In Europe, dragons were often fierce, fire-breathing creatures, symbolizing chaos and evil. In contrast, Chinese dragons were seen as wise, benevolent beings, often connected to good fortune and prosperity. And in India, dragons were revered as spiritual and powerful figures in Hindu and Buddhist traditions. Even the Americas have their own unique dragon-like creatures in Native American folklore, 
each one with distinct characteristics that reflect their environment and culture. So, were dragons real? While we may never know for sure, the fact that similar dragon stories appear across the globe in cultures with no communication between them suggests that there might be more to the myth than we think. Maybe dragons were once real creatures, adapted to their environments, and just like other legends, their stories were passed down through the generations. Whether they were fire-breathing giants or wise serpents, dragons have captured our imaginations for centuries and continue to do so today. What do you think? Could dragons have really existed? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've ever wondered, did dinosaurs really have feathers? And do they sound anything like what we hear in movies? Then don't miss this video right here. It'll blow your mind.